Founded in 1827, the tiny town of Smithville, Texas, is popular about an hour east of Austin for things like Smitty, the giant gingerbread man, and Hope Floats, the popular television show. It's even a vital link in the Union Pacific Railroad. But today, we're going to link it to something ever more important, at least for the future of this community and our economy. Smithville is entering into the future as a host of a solar power electric plant. We're gonna visit that 1.4 megawatt solar plant installed by our friends from Spear, CNI, and Trina Solar, which is powering more than 100 homes here in tiny Smithville, Texas. As things are prone to do, times they are changing. Not only do we have a new administration, but the ways that developers interact with technology and even incentive programs is constantly in flux, as evidenced by this video, which we recorded all the way back in late November, and it's taken us a little while to get the production just right. And in the interim, not only has the technology, in particular, uh, the Trina Tracker product, evolved or changed a little bit in terms of its availability in the market, but the incentive program, the REAP program, as you'll hear us discuss, is currently on pause. Go figure with the current administration. And uh, in fact, it was actually put on pause before the new administration was brought in because there was such an influx of applications. I do believe that the REAP grant program will continue to be funded. It will continue to get renewed. I just don't think that there will be very many opportunities to get money from REAP here in 2025. It should stay on your radar. And for that, we've got this episode. So you'll start to look for these types of product pairings and incentive opportunities in the marketplace to give you an edge as a developer. All right, first up, I spoke with Robert Tamble, the city manager of Smithville, to discuss why the city leaned into solar energy. Here he is answering my question of how the city was first approached to develop that solar project was approached by the developers uh, from Go Big Solar who were buying property by the airport. And they wanted to know if we'd be interested in a power purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what's that? And um, so that's when it all began, probably six years ago, yeah. five, six years ago. And we were able to work with the LCRA and because and, I got generation and transmission, you have Blue Bonnet Electric Co-op, you have LCRA. And, and you have Go Big Solar or Smith of Solar One UGE who wants to build and allow you to purchase power from them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a 25 year power purchase agreement with uh, Smith of Solar One mm -hmm. and also Smith of Solar Two. So far, Smith of Solar One is commissioned and producing probably thirty to $40,000 in, in savings to the city a year by mm -hmm. using an, an alternative source for purchase power. So Smithville Solar One was about 6.6% .6 of our total 15% aggregate you know, that we could acquire from a third party. Uh, this 25 year purchase power plan that we, that we have uh, is gonna allow us to achieve significant savings over the long term that we can put back into the maintenance of the transmission lines, the 42 miles of transmission lines that we have uh, in our community. So the intent is to feed back, feed it back into the system. Do you have to address any concerns around land use, particularly from those who maybe considered that this space could be used for other purposes? Didn't really come up because it wasn't being used At really all. anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the location of this parcel, of this property, you, you've got your uh, Highway 95 access, then you have frontage road, mm -hmm. you know, and there's some residences that there, and then, then you have an interstitial space where this property was between the residential property and the airport. So it just kind of made sense. It wasn't being used anyway, and the people who own the property adjacent to Highway mm -hmm. 95 weren't going to buy it. So this was a good opportunity for us because the uh, owners of Go Big Solar and Smithville Solar won't agree to annex. So now we get property taxes off of that property where we weren't getting any. So oh, that fantastic. was another, it's another uh, ROI benefit. Yeah. That's amazing. How do you feel that adopting these new technologies like solar um, sort of matches the identity that you want for the city of Smithville? Uh, it, it aligns with our overall goals and objectives and, and, and vision of what Smithville needs and should be. I like to, to think we're um, self-sustaining and, and understand the impacts of, of carbon footprint and 
being environmentally friendly. And all of this helps us achieve those goals. Mm. And, and uh, icing on the cake is the cost savings. Next up, we travel to Smithville Solar Project, where I spoke to Mark Rangel, the executive vice president of Spear, to discuss their involvement in the development of this solar project, covering everything from the power it generates to the technology used and how the project was financed. Mark, I'm curious why Smithville and specifically why Spear became involved in this project particularly. Right. Well, we're local. That's one thing. Um, also, we specialize in securing the USDA REAP grants. Mm. And um, we assisted the developer on the concept design and pricing the, um, the investment of the project. Can you give us a sense of the relative impact environmentally, economically of this project to the municipality of Smithville? It's huge. So it's like powering 170 homes. Wow. Um, it's reducing the carbon each year by um, 2,000 tons. The system, it produces 2.67 gigawatt hours each year, which is big for a small community like Smithville. Yeah. Is there anything unique to this project that for you as a developer who've done you know, dozens, maybe hundreds of projects, that really stands out as a identifier? So you can see we're in the middle of a green field. On one side, we have the airport, and then on the other side, we have residential homes. This is a good use of this space. Nothing was ever going to be built here, mm. but we also had to squeeze um, this array in a pretty small area, basically a little bit less than 10 acres, and that was challenging. Mark, along those lines, as we talk about these smaller projects, you know, municipal projects do tend to be sort of sub-20 megawatt, what the utility scale industry likes to call distributed generation but which is definitely not rooftop, decidedly not. Are there logistical or design challenges that you face with these smaller scale projects? These smaller projects, they don't really actually have the economies of scale that those utility scale projects. Yeah. Meaning that um, our cost to install is greater than the utility scale, which means that essentially our power purchase agreement is uh, more when we're selling it back to the off-taker, the end user. Yeah. And so that really makes it very hard to pencil, especially here in Texas, we have really cheap energy here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the big challenge is, is to drive down the costs of the system. That's what really comes in play with Trina. Um, their product is very economical and really helps us drive down that cost. But the big factor is, us leveraging the USDA REAP grant. Right. That really helped us um, because it covers, in this case, 50% of the total project costs. That allowed us to drive down our PPA price to make it economical for the city of Smithville to um, deem this um, an investment grade project. Mark, one of the things that we have recognized is despite the amazing proliferation of solar across the United States, there's still a fair amount of opposition and a really low amount of recognition of the wonderful benefits that are coming to these communities. How did you all engage with the city to market this product once it was up and running? And what sort of uh, feedback did you, do you see from communities once these projects are installed? The developer simply just reached out to the city manager and started a conversation with them about the benefits of solar and, you know, what's the rough cost of the the energy that they would be buying. I really think that that's what really got them interested, that they could be buying energy that is less than what they're buying um, at the market rate. Yep. Um, you know, I, I think the, the big benefit that the cities are seeing now is that when their prices are really high at the market, that's when we're delivering energy. Right. So the value of solar from arrays like this is not only um, lowering their energy costs, but it's lowering the, the total demand for the city. Right. And they do get charged demand charges, which um, this system is coincidentally also lowering yeah. those demand charges yeah. as well. And how do you market it to the broader community? You know, this is tucked away behind the airport. Not everyone's going to see it. So what the city of Smithville has done is they've released flyers inside their electric bills. Um, obviously, it went 
in front of the city council. Yeah. And so, but it is really hard to get visibility to these projects, mm. not only to the community that it serves, but to the broader, you know, Texas rural communities. Um, you know, we're really trying to develop a marketing plan with partners like Trina to reach out to all these city managers and these electrical co-ops yeah. to let them know that, that there's healthy investment tax credits, accelerated depreciation, and the USDA REAP grants that really can help um, benefit these communities. Could you expand a little bit on keeping this project as minimal to the impact on the land as possible, and maybe even how you weave that into the REAP grant process? Yeah, really one of the really cool things that's part of our operation and maintenance plan is that we're hiring a, a local farmer to come out here and bring sheep. Huh. And the sheep is gonna graze and basically eat all this vegetation so we don't have any large vegetation um, shattering the, the solar array. So that puts a farmer at work. Um, obviously that helps the agriculture community and it really benefits us with managing the, the vegetation. Um, and honestly, it is, um, more cost effective than hiring guys to come out here with mowers and weed eaters that could shoot a rock and hit a panel and yeah. break something. Um, you know, it does take some coordination, um, but once you kind of get the cadence down, um, you know, the sheep come out here hungry and they leave uh, completely and they full. Leave full. <laughs> yeah. While I was on site, I got a chance to speak with the Trina Solar team, the company that provided the trackers and panels. Sam Buffington and Blake Gand give a perspective of the products that the Spear team has integrated into this novel project. First up is Sam, who discusses the technology used and how the trackers and specifically the unique two and portrait by facial panels work. After Sam, I talked with Blake Gand about how Trina helped Smithville deploy so much solar on such a small parcel of land, and specifically how Trina became a one-stop solution for the products that are incorporated into this project, namely the panels, tracker, and inverters. Not only are we benefiting from the shade of the relative height of this tracker, but also the massive expanse of what we call a 2P or a 2 and portrait tracker. I'd love to hear more about how the mechanics of this tracker work. So I thought we'd bring in Sam to talk a little bit more about how all of this sort of comes together. Sam, why would a developer want to go with a two and portrait tracker compared with what many are familiar with, a single module on, uh, on a row? And can you talk a little bit more about uh, maybe some of the technical details, ground coverage ratio and site constraints, things like that. Absolutely. So Trina does offer both a one and two P solution, depending on the customer's needs. Mm -hmm. The two P is better when you have a small site, such as this one here in Smithville, where we needed maximum energy density, but we also needed the peak power demand available all the time versus a fixed tilt where we would have a much shorter bell curve as opposed to our Vanguard two P, which dramatically improves the performance throughout the day. And is there any particular benefit? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are bifacial modules. That's right. So so bifacial modules are, they primarily benefit from the fact that you can get back face lighting. So not only light reflected off of the ground, but also off of other modules as mm -hmm. the array is aligned. Yep. That can also increase your performance depending upon location, sometimes as much as 20%, but always you want to be conservative with that. I heard a term here that I don't believe I've heard on other projects. I've probably been on a hundred projects at this point. I think it's a novel way to approach the partnership that you have with developers. Can you tell me a bit more about this idea of the golden row? Right, so the golden row, Nico, is where our project managers will be with the EPC or developer through the entire project. But very specifically, the golden row, when material starts to get delivered, we're ready to start construction. Once you start driving piles, Dustin or Scott will be on site to help walk the EPC like spear through this project as far as how to assemble the pitfalls, the benefits, how to make it easier on themselves, go through the manual with them. That's all part of that golden row build. And that usually takes about a week. So you'll have them on speed dial and on site mm -hmm. with you if you need the help. So effectively establishing that template that the rest of the project rolls out. That's right. They're establishing a template and a order of operations for the construction of the project to make sure it goes as smoothly as possible. The idea of a project this size having trackers is becoming more common, but you know, in our career, we've seen that it's not as common as the large utility scale projects. Talk a bit about how Trina specifically helps empower CNI developers like Spear 
on projects of this scale? Yeah, absolutely. Most projects of this scale are are fixed tilt projects. Our product fit super well with this project in particular. There was space constraints, but our V2P product mm-hmm. allows for two modules to be placed in in portrait, which allowed us to maximize the space here um, at this site. I'd love to hear how the Trina Pro Pro package in particular helps Spear address some of the site-specific challenges that they encountered on this project. Yeah, absolutely. The This site in particular uh, did have some site constraints uh, due to size and whatnot. So um, our V2P product here, you can see, is very tall. Uh, it allows us to put two of our in-type TopCon modules in portrait. And so uh, due to this height, they're able to bring in livestock as well. Uh, to help uh, control the the grass and growth around in the area as well. And that will help reduce O&M costs in the long term. Blake, we've both been in sales for a long time. One of the hard things to really figure out is what to suggest or how to organize the product selection for a customer. How did you think about the process of what you wanted to recommend to Mark and the Spear team when you got engaged in this project? Yeah, absolutely. So with the space constraint here at Smithville, uh, it was a fairly easy decision in recommending our in-type TopCon technology. These modules have higher efficiency, um, higher wind rating as well. Um, And these products were engineered together. So from the engineering standpoint, uh, with installation, it's already planned to go together. Did you get any pushback from Spear on the full wrap solution? You know, it's one thing for them to be accommodated or accustomed to purchasing modules from Trina. um, But, you know, was there any pushback initially on you putting forth both not just the modules, but the tracker and the inverter as a full wrap solution? No, there wasn't any any pushback. Once he met with our engineers and went over the site plan, uh, it was a pretty easy decision for him, especially with this uh, being a new product for the Spear team, uh, offering the aspect of uh, bringing our project managers on site for that golden row was also a major selling point. Look, developing solar projects doesn't have to be complex. They often are, but there are solutions in the marketplace to help reduce the risk to the buyer, as in the case of the city of Smithville, to the developer and Spear and to the marketplace. You know, incentive programs like the REAP grant help to remove some of the uncertainty around the returns on these projects so that they become the classic no-brainer. I hope that you enjoyed the conversation and the perspective, first person of the buyer in Robert Tamble in the city of Smithville, as well as the concept to completion of the project for Mark Rangel and the Spear team. Thank you to Trina Solar for inviting us out to see a project in real time, in person, that they deployed with their Trina Pro solution. If you would like to learn more about Trina's products, you can learn more about them at mysuncast.com forward slash Trina. That's T-R-I-N-A. And of course, if you would like to find more ways to work with us to get your message out, you can do that by emailing team at suncast.me, going to suncast.media, and learn all the ways that we can help you refine and communicate your story. We're Suncast Media. We amplify clean energy voices just like Mark and Trina and Mr. Tamble. Hope that we get to help you get more clarity on leaving a legacy in this industry. And I hope you'll come back as a result. Thank you for listening. Remember, you are what you listen to. Thanks again for showing up, Solar Warrior. It's half the battle. <laughs>